Hi folks, this is Sandy McDermott bringing you lesson two of 10 minute tutorials. Yay! Today's topic is paper textures. Our materials are three types of paper, sketch paper, copy paper, and watercolor paper. I'm using one pencil today, happens to be a 6B, and two kinds of erasers, which we'll use only at the end. A kneaded eraser and a white eraser. All right, this is gonna be fun. One of my favorite things is feeling how a pencil glides across the page. In this case, with my 6B, I'm going to start on the sketch paper. And like lesson one, we're not drawing anything. I'm just going to start creating another swatch. This is the best way to get familiar and comfortable with your pencils. To gain an understanding of how they interact with paper or other mediums. This feels so nice, so much fun. Okay, so light pressure in the beginning. Now I'm working into a moderate pressure to see, uh, to gradually get it, the, the value of it a little darker, laying down more graphite on the page. And now I'm going to work into much more pressure to see just how dark I can get this. Okay, there we go. Right away, you can start to see the texture of the paper. Light value, lots of speckles. As you work your way into a darker or medium value, you can still see those speckles, but you're starting to see more graphite. And then we come into the, the most pressure applied, the most graphite on the page, and the darker the value. So what you're actually seeing happen here is the surface of papers, depending on how toothy they are, have bumps in them. This is not a scientific rendering, by the way, of the surface of paper. Uh, it's just a, a way to illustrate um, the physical process of putting graphite onto paper. So with your light pressure and little bits of graphite, your graphite is really just touching the, the top surfaces um, can be referred to as mountains and valleys, mountains, valleys, so the ups and the downs of that surface. The more pressure you apply, the deeper that graphite can settle into the paper surface. And depending on how heavy excuse me, how textured your paper is, applying more pressure to get to that uh, darker value is actually pressing the graphite right into the valleys. But if your paper surface is really rough and has lots of uh, not only uh, 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 texture that you can feel, but, but texture that you can see, um, you may never actually get your graphite down into the deepest valleys of the paper surface. I'm going to move on to copy paper. Same approach. Light application first. And you can definitely see some texture on the paper. 
copy paper of the three of these that I have is uh, definitely the smoothest. I can feel that with my pencil. I can feel how smooth it is. Okay, now I'm going to apply more pressure to see if I can really cover up those valleys. It doesn't take much. I mean, I am applying a, uh, a good deal of pressure here, but it really doesn't take that much effort to fill it up, fill it in, and get that nice dark value there. So just a quick comparison. We still have some texture happening here. You can actually see it more in this middle value, and then it kind of disappears pretty quickly here uh, by applying more pressure. Moving on to watercolor paper. So actually, just a side thing, one of the cool things about using a soft pencil, let's see if I could get that in focus. Um, because it is soft, it often creates its own sharp point. I'm going to use the other side of this where uh, the point is and see if I can wear that down again. Um, okay, that's just a little side note. Watercolor paper comes in a variety of surfaces. So we have cold press, which is what this is. And cold press refers to having a good deal of toothy surface to it. And you can see that as I apply this graphite. Rough surface is really rough. It's big bumps, big valleys, or deep valleys. And usually a heavier weight to hold more water. There's also a hot press, which is smooth like coffee paper, but it still has some texture. Okay, applying more pressure over here, but I have to keep layering to try to cover up or grind this down into the valleys. You can see a lot of speckling happening here. You can see, you can still see a lot of speckling happening in, happening here. And here, it is much less so, but you can still see some speckling happening, particularly around the edges. Very different from one surface to another. I'm going to quickly show you what a 2H might look like on each of these, real quick. This has a harder lead, so it actually takes a lot more effort to apply in a, in a nice smooth way. Oftentimes, when, even when you're using the side of the pencil, you can still get a, a linear feeling to it rather than a smooth continuation. That works really nice on the watercolor paper. All right, erasers, real quick. Kneaded eraser is probably the one that you will use the most. It is not designed to take away all of the graphite on a paper. It's intended instead to lift away areas that have become too dark. Now, if you have a very light application of graphite, particularly with a, um, a, uh, a lighter pencil, as in an H pencil, um, F, HB, something like that, you probably can take all of that graphite away depending on how much pressure you've applied uh, to that graphite. So, let's see if I can do this this way. Here we go. Here, on the light side of this, I can get rid of most of it, but not here. Barely can I get rid of it there. Let's try that on the sketch paper. Same thing. 
you can see some of that light application disappearing. But what happens when I go over here to the darker edge? There's still a stain there. Really what you want to use this for is lightening up. And the best thing is you can twist it to make little areas uh, to work on small areas of lifting graphite or you can shape it to whatever size you want like a stump maybe to get larger areas. See that takes it away quite nicely. Your white eraser is actually designed to take away all graphite on the page. However, if you have used a darker, uh, softer pencil, or if you have applied a lot of pressure with that graphite, whichever pencil you choose, uh, it may not take it all away. And, and you have to know that it's between these two erasers, you're going to use this one the most. Um, but you want this one handy so that you can grab it if you need it. But be aware of what they can and can't do. So up here, I can get rid of most of that, but you can see a little bit of staining happening. Same thing on the sketch paper, more so, I think. And it's definitely not going to take away all of that. So handy stuff to know. Okay, that's it for today's lesson. Next one is creating graphite uh, value scales. So be prepared for that with your favorite pencils. In the meantime, practice with these. Practice from lesson one and lesson two. Get really familiar with what your pencils can do for you uh, so you can make informed choices and figure out which ones you like the best. Until then, if you have any questions, leave them in the box below. I will be happy to answer um, all of them and have a great afternoon. Thanks for joining me.